This is Dr. Holt. This video for AP Physics C is on free body diagrams. One of the things I encounter year after year when I teach AP Physics is that some students do not want to draw free body diagrams. And I hope that you do not end up in this situation because people fight this for some strange reason and they refuse to want to draw the free body diagram. If you want to make your life easy, just commit yourself today that you will always draw free body diagrams when you set up these problems. If you use free body diagrams with any of your physics problems when dealing with forces, your life is going to be so much easier and your problems are going to fall apart. If you don't do it, you're going to be struggling. You'll be looking just like this woman right here. So a couple things I've noticed from experience in industry that every successful engineer or physicist, they draw free body diagrams. If you do, the answer will just fall out for you. Okay, in doing these, you need to have some type of system. And what I recommend when you draw these is that you have a force and then you can determine what you want this to be. I call this like N being a normal force and this is what is causing the reaction. This is the earth onto the man. So man is the feeler, this is the dealer. That's what's causing the force onto the man. So same way here, this is force, this would be gravity, this is earth onto the man. So my free body diagram would look more like this right here. I draw myself a solid dot to represent the center of the object. I have the two forces. <clears throat> If they are the same magnitude, I like to draw a line through them to know that. And then I label everything just like I did here. So here are the details. Identify the type. Identify the, the, the force dealer. Identify the force feeler. And I usually have an arrow pointing the direction it's going to go. Now with every force, you're typically going to have a force pair. So here I have the normal force of the earth onto the man. Well, that may, if a man's standing on the earth, then he's going to cause a normal force of the man onto the earth. If I have a gravitational force of the earth pulling on the man, then I'll also have one of the man pulling on the earth. So those are called force pairs. And then what, what they do is they're always going to be in the same line of action. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're going to act on different bodies. They have the same type and they're going to always be equal and opposite and they always concern just two forces. That's where the, note, the name pair comes from. So let's look at this situation. I have a man on a box and a box on the earth. Here I would have the normal force of the box onto the man. I would have the, the weight of the man, which would be the gravitational force of the earth onto the man. When I draw the free body diagram of the box itself, I would have the normal force of the man on the box. I would have the gravitational force of the earth on the box. It would have a force pair of the gravitational force of the box on the earth. And then, going back to the box, I would have the normal force of the earth onto the box. And then, if I was drawing this free body diagram, as I said, you would have a force pair here, this force pair here, and this force pair back here. If you uh, don't understand this, I would just stop the video and look at how I've labeled each one of these. We can get into really complicated things like this where you have a stack of different ones and you have to draw a force, force body diagram for each one of these objects. Here I will not do that. I'll try to do some that are a little bit more simple that are simpler. Let's look at the first one here. Here I have a 28.5 kilogram box M1. So this box here is 28.5. I have a 13.5 here. And I'm just going to draw right now, I won't do the table, I'll draw the force, the uh, free body diagram of these. So I'll start out with M2. To do M2, I'll come over here, I draw the dot, and that represents the center mass right about here. I will come down here. I will draw this force coming down here. Now this force, is not M1 acting on M2. This is going to be the force of gravity of the Earth onto M2. 
Okay? Now we know the mass is 13.5. We will take 13.5, we'll multiply that by 9.8 to get the force, and we would label that as 132.3 newtons. Since M2 is not accelerating, then we know that we will have another force that's going back up. That's going to be the normal force. And that force will be M1 onto M2. And that will also equal to 132.3. So this would just be the free body diagram of M2. When I draw the free body diagram of M1, I come down here. Now I'm going to erase this just to give myself a little bit more space for everything. I will have one vector coming down. We'll let this one be the force of gravity, and that would be the Earth onto M1. And again, we would take 28.5, we would multiply that by 9.8 and we would get a value of about 279.3 newtons. Okay, we have another force coming down, and this is the force that M2 is going to be pushing on M1. And again, that's going to be a force pair, and the force pair here goes right back to this one here. That's going to be a force pair right there. Okay, So that also has to equal to 132.3. Okay, now I have the table pushing back up on F1. And it's a good idea to label to when you make these to make the length here of, uh, about the sum of those. I mean, you don't have to, but it's just a good idea to do that. This will be our normal force, and this will be the table onto m1, and that will equal to the sum of these two, this one and this one. That gives me a value of 411. 0.6 newtons. Okay, and that would be the free body diagram of M1. Now, one thing you should note here is if you look at M1, everything is acting on M1. Here, here, and here. Same when we did M2, free body diagram, everything is acting on M2. Like, for example, M2 cannot act on itself, M1 cannot act on itself. So that's how you do the free body diagram of that particular one. Let's look at one more in this video. Here I have a bird. It's flying horizontally where there's wind drag present. Okay, we're going to make the assumption that the bird is flying at a constant velocity. So we'll come down here. We will draw our center of mass, representing the, approximately the center of mass of the bird. Okay, since the bird is moving forward and there's wind dra drag, we will draw a force coming back this way. We'll draw a force coming back this way. We also know the bird has weight. So draw this force down here. And we know that since the bird is not falling, that its wings must be moving, or there must be some type of lift that's taking place. So it would look like this, and now let's start labeling everything. Now we do know that this and this will be the same, and we could say that most likely this and this would be the same. I should make it a little bit longer so it looks approximately the same. All right, now we're ready to do it. We'll start with this one. We know this will be the force of gravity of Earth onto the bird. We know this would be the force of some type of lift now that's going to be the air pushing onto the bird. All right, this would be the drag. And that would be the wind. I'm sorry, just make it air, not wind. Air 
onto the bird. All right, and then the uh, force here. Now the, the bird is pushing onto the air, so the air is pushing back onto the bird, and that would also be, and you could call that like a thrust or something like that, thrust force of air onto the bird. And that's what the free body diagram would look like of the bird. Okay, this is a short video of the lecture, but again, um, it gets to the point of how to draw the free body diagrams. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do this in every type of problem that you work with where you're dealing with vectors. If you do this, um, again, life will be much easier. You're not going to struggle when we get into complex problems. So you pretty much need to dedicate yourself right now that you're going to do this on every one of these problems. Best of luck.